NDMeTV.com, the Everybody Network. From Palm Springs, California, it's Curiosity with your host, Renee Poingard. Here's Renee. Hi, I'm Renee Pinard, and welcome to the show Curiosity. I am loving this show because the fact of our fantastic guests and also what is being revealed to them. We have a lady I want you to meet. She's super fantastic. Her name is Kimberly. Welcome to the show, thank Kimberly. You, thank you so much for having me here yes. today. Yes, I want to learn all about you. First of all, I got to say, you are so doggone pretty. Thank you. I mean, thank you, you are pretty, you. pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> so much pretty. I'm wondering how can you be married with two children looking like you're about 14. Right? Yeah, I hear that all the she time. Say right. <laughs> I love it. All right. So how long have you been married? Uh, right now we're getting ready to celebrate eight years next month. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And how old are your children? I have two 10-year-olds right now. They are 11 months apart. So I have one turning 11 actually this Wednesday or Thursday. So you had like one long pregnancy. Yeah, uh -huh. all year. Are they very close? You know what? My mom wanted to name them identical to each other, but they look totally opposite from each other and two different personalities. Do they clash or do they me mesh together? I mean, they do what all typical sisters do. So, uh -huh. I mean, they love each other, but they clash with each other. So, but they are each other's best friend. All right. So I just got to go here now. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have a baby in your arms. You're carrying a baby. And now you have two babies in your arms. Mm -hmm. What was that like? You know what? Especially being a first time mom, it was an experience that I'll never forget. But you know what? Even to this day at them being 10, I still make them lay on me as they were when they were babies. I just love that feeling. I fall asleep with one in my arm and one lay on on top of me even to this day. So oh, I wouldn't change it. I would repeat it again. That was wasn't it? Yes, it was. That's yes. beautiful. Yes. That is so beautiful. Thank you. And I also hear that you're a realtor. Yes, ma'am. Oh, tell am. me about that. How did that happen? Was that before children or after children? So they definitely came after children. So mm -hmm. I did spend uh, about 15 years in the corporate business mm -hmm. and I had made a decision at toward the end of my uh, experience with the corporate life to go self-employed. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I know I wanted to definitely be a business strategist because I left Wells Fargo Bank as a business specialist there for eight years. Oh, wonderful. So I wanted to branch off on my own and try to do something else and, and not be so tied down to the corporate politics and things of that nature. So I found out I've always been in school. I found out I had all the classes that I needed to take to get my real estate license. I did not know. So I submitted the application. I studied really hard and I made it a point to know that I was going to pass that exam the first time. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know I was going to pass it the first time within an hour. So when I walked out of that three and a half hour exam in 59 minutes, done, ready to go, oh, look at Miss I knew that this was the career that was meant for me. So it's had its challenges, but you know, it's still been rewarding along the way. So let me ask you a question. Number one, I could tell by your enthusiasm, you're an intelligent person mm -hmm. from working in a bank eight years, for turning around, now you're in the real estate, a business that I take that it wasn't a desire, but it, a path that led to that. Right. You come out within an hour mm -hmm. of an exam that most people struggle with. Right. So how did the actual knocking on doors, getting clients, selling disappointments, ooh, I want to sell this house, how did that develop? Where are you with that now? So with me, I mean, every day as an entrepreneur is hard. So I, every day I counted a blessing to go through different obstacles. And I try to teach different clients that I mentor as a business coach and a business strategist that this is a part of the road as being an entrepreneur is to go through these obstacles. So I welcome them in. Every single month I look at where I came from, if I had a success, if I had something that may have been a challenge to better myself. So I am proud to say that I have sold my first home already. So oh, great. with less than a year being a, as a realtor, I have a nice database and clientele that's built. So as long as I'm continuing to advance myself as a person to be a better businesswoman, then I just welcome on every challenge that comes my way. Well, you sound fantastic. You sound like you're very challenged far as your focus of where you want to go and make sure that you achieve everything you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And now I heard you say that you're a small business coach. Yeah. Well, how did that happen? Where does that fit in? 
So, like I said, I was with the bank for eight years, and mm -hmm. I was there as a business a specialist there. So we did coach a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs around managing their finances and advancing uh -huh. in their business. But uh -huh. I wanted to take it a little bit further because I do have a background that supports lending and go into that whole spectrum there. And I tell everyone that I get an opportunity to coach. What brought me into this position was back when the recession hit, I was an underwriter for mortgage. So mm. I approved a lot of loans. Okay? Mm. <laughs> and, but I also was there to collect too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I saw a lot of families separate and be torn apart from the recession. And I made it a point that moving forward, I want to be able to educate. I want to be able to teach those who don't know around financial stability and understanding what you're walking into to grow your family. So that's how I got into the bank. That's how I got more into business. And then I took that further. I've, I've taught my own workshop with the Small Business Development Center within the Inland Empire around the path to financing your business. I've also taught it with SCORE on the path to financing oh, your wow. business. Yes, I'm Classes. Yes, yes, yes. So they were grateful, gracious enough to give me an opportunity to develop my own workshop and actually present it in multiple cities. So let me make sure I get this all together because you're saying a lot and I want to make sure we know who you really are. Right. One, we know that you're married. Right. Two, you're a mother of two beautiful children, 11 months apart. Mm -hmm. You're a real estate person who just sold their first home and you are a rah rah cheerleader for people who need to know how to run their small business. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So with all of that being said, you're still curious mm -hmm. as to what people think about you. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. I'm curious as to why you're <laughs> curious when it seems like you have all this together. So when we come back, mm -hmm. we're going to reveal to you what other people think about you. I'm looking forward all to right. it. We're going to take a commercial. We'll be right back and we're going to reveal what other people think about our superstar here. <laughs> Stay tuned. Make sure you come back. We're back, and I'm excited because we have Kimberly, who is so doggone positive mm -hmm. in her way of thinking and her job choices, her family, a mother of two. I am loving this. So now we're going to reveal what people think about you. Oh, okay. Let's go. So let me tell you, that means that we have comments from maybe spiritual associations, your friends, mm -hmm. your professional friends, maybe your mate or a group of people are you ready to hear what they think i'm so ready okay so mm -hmm. i want to tell you first of all everybody say number one you're the life of the party that's true well so how are you the life of the party i mean i'm always laughing and smiling so my dad was a comedian my whole family is comedians I uh oh mean, i'm one of nine so we have a pretty big family and so when you walk into the room you know how to command i the room. know how to absolutely okay so then the other thing they said they said that you are always positive which i can see that right now myself mm -hmm. and that you're always loving that you're kind and that you're a woman of god mm -hmm. all of those things are what your friends feel about you mm -hmm. you feel like that's great i feel like that's amazing that's uh -huh. what i strive to be that's really amazing uh -huh. mm -hmm. And they also said that you're a best friend of your children. How do you become a best friend of your children? I mean, I try to allow, we were all brought up, I mean, old school, at least I was old mm -hmm. school, and I value a lot of the principles that I was brought up on, but I do also want to also implement things to allow my children to explore their own personalities and their own, be their own person. So. Mm -hmm. When, I, when people say I'm best friends with my kids, because I give them an opportunity to voice themselves. Mm -hmm. I give them an opportunity to show their personality and express that without being so judgmental or having things already planned out for you. So I do have a 16-year-old stepson that lives with me as well. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'm telling he's really, really good on uh, Fortnite. And I know gaming is the thing right now to uh -huh. make millions of dollars. But I'm teaching him, like, that is a source. But I want you to also identify with yourself. Tell me who Tyron is. So that's where we're at, and I'm allowing him to explore that mm -hmm. while he's going through preparing for graduation. I got something to tell you, Kimberly, and this is disturbing to me. I mean, really, really disturbing to me because of looking at you, the person who you are, the coach, the positiveness, and I want to give you all of that. But you have three things 
that people have said about you that disturb me because I don't feel that <laughs> about you. So let's go there. Let's go. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, they said that you're very outspoken, mm -hmm. which is not a positive way, but a negative way, that you view your opinion openly, and sometimes it's not appreciated. Mm -hmm. The second thing, they say that you are blunt that you're very, very blunt with your conversations, that you, and usually when a person is blunt, that means that they're uh, usually not caring or thinking about another person, or they could be emotionally drawn to things that is not what they uh, really feel, that's just coming out from somewhere else that's d deep down hidden. Mm -hmm. The other thing that really disturbs me is the fact that they say that you are insensitive. And to be insensitive means that you focus on yourself, that you're really not caring, and it is the first thing that is listed in a narcissistic personality. So I got to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you feel you are self-centered? Focus on yourself. The world is all you. I hear all the positive things, but are you the it person? And do you have a tendency to be a nar narcissistic person? <laughs> So what I can say is that I have been told that I have been self-centered from family and friends. Uh -huh. And I am a very direct and blunt person, but I mean that in all positive way. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Blah, 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 blah. You mean it in a positive way, but how does a person receive when you are blunt? Blunt means I don't really care about your opinion. I don't care who you are. I don't care mm -hmm. what you're feeling. It is all about what I think and what you're thinking doesn't matter. I mean, I could pass right past you. So what I have learned, especially and continually to learn um, about myself, because I am a person who does recognize my flaws. Okay, before you talk about what you've learned, mm -hmm. do you own up that that's who I you are? I do own. That's who I am. Where does that come from? Um, I think that a lot of that comes from my upbringing. My mother is very blunt and direct. Nine children? Yes. So where did you fit in with the nine? I'm in the middle child. So that means you had to scream and have a voice? Well, let's just say I'm a very powerful singer, so my voice has always been big. I've never had to have a mic at all with singing at all. I got to hear that before we end the show. <laughs> okay, but outside of that, so your voice has already been big. Are you fighting to get out or to be seen with nine kids in the family? Am I so positive and on point is because of being the middle of eight other kids? I think a lot of it has to be with, yes, I am the middle child and I am self-driven. I do motivate myself, but I had to also realize that not everyone thinks the way that I do. Even though it may be the right thing, not everyone's going to conceive it that way, especially if I'm being very direct with it. So, I so what are you saying? Everybody doesn't see things my way. What are you saying? What are you saying when you make that statement? So what I say, like, there may be some situations where we know right from wrong, mm -hmm. regardless if we, where we come from, you know right from wrong. And if I voice my opinion on what we all know is right, and you may not be in the position to accept, take accountability for your actions to know that what you're doing is wrong, it may come off as blunt to you. Because mm -hmm. I'm being direct to you and letting you know that we know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. So I had to realize that just because I may feel or may know that a situation is right, I have to know how to choose my words when I'm expressing that to an individual and learn how to more empathize with them because obviously they don't feel that way because they're responding in a certain way that we know may not be right. Okay, so I have expressed to you my disappointment that I see this beautiful mm -hmm. outside and inward woman mm -hmm. who's positive helping other people and I want to know based upon my opinion that I express that I don't see where outspoken is being blunt possibly insensitive with a little edge of the first list of something that might mm -hmm. be narcissistic what are you going to think about me when you walk out that door in my opinion save it okay because we're coming back thank you and I want to hear what you have to say <laughs> okay all right make sure you come back because we want to find out what Kimberly is going to do about my opinion even though I'm not one of her friends <laughs> or her family but what she feels about my opinion mm -hmm. and about the three things that has been revealed please come back Welcome back. We have Kimberly, which I failed to reveal to you that people told me you are a hothead. So am I going to sit closer to you or am I going to move aside when you get ready to tell me about being blunt, which usually means cruel, mm -hmm. cruel, mm -hmm. 
insensitive, which yeah. usually means the first thing that's listed on a narcissistic personality, mm -hmm. outspoken. Are you hot-headed? Do I need to move over to the side, or, or, or am I good sitting right here? You good. You okay. Good. <laughs> so when do you get hot-headed? I don't. You know, there Why was... Why did someone say that you are hot-headed? There was a time that I did get very hot-headed with my mouth. Now, keep in mind, I've never been in a fight in my life, okay? Uh-huh. High school, childhood, nothing. I am the, the non-confrontational person that you would come across. But when you come to me and you ask me for my opinion... You got to mm. be prepared to receive that answer. So if I come to you for opinion, I'm giving you back what you gave me. I mm -hmm. come to you for an opinion. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be one that is hot headed? Does it have to be one where it's blunt? Does it have mm -hmm. to come off like that? Absolutely not. Absolutely uh -huh. not. But I am a strong believer of loyalty. I'm a strong believer of giving back the way you receive. So when I develop a relationship with someone, especially which I try to keep my circle has gone real small, has gotten real small. Over hold time. up, hold up, girl. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Social circle, social circle. Are I, they small because you blunt? No. Or are you because you're insensitive to other people? I mean, why is your circle getting smaller still and bigger? My circle is small because of choice. Because everyone comes with their own flaws, their own abilities to do things in a good way and a negative way. But I do am a strong believer that I cannot allow anyone to drain my energy to drain my spirit. Just as highly as you spoke of me being motivating and supporting each other or other business owners and getting out and making a name for myself, that also requires that I have to control my space and control my energy because I have a bigger plan in place. So yes, at times when it's friends or family that may not understand the journey and you have to be blunt with them to take control of your time, to con take control of your energy is not perceived as that, that way. It's not perceived in a nice way at times. Kimberly, I need you. Mm -hmm. I need you. I am hurt. I am one of these small business people who cannot make it. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I lost my money. I want to do better. I'm hurt on the inside. I come to you asking questions, things of that nature, that you feel that I'm draining you. Where do you draw the line between a person draining you? Is it because they're not accepting your opinion, what you think, what you feel? Mm -hmm. Where does the drain come from? So the drain, it comes from, and it's not from my clients because I am a very professional and I like to keep business, business, and personal, personal. So definitely on a professional level, I do not allow that. I've, I've gained enough strength and gone through enough obstacles to know how to handle myself in the midst of objections through my clients. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my family, the people that I lean on to be there for me, especially when I'm weak and when I need help, then yes, that's when I, tr I draw the line from draining that personal energy from me in that way. Okay, so let me, let me add on to that. So what do you do with a person like me who's mm -hmm. in need of you mm -hmm. in your professional life? Mm -hmm. I get on your nerves. I'm draining you to a certain degree. I'm not accepting what you're saying because I can't see it. What do you do to make sure that you keep me as a client? So I empathize. I listen and I empathize with you because business is business. And my job is to understand your concerns and fix the problem. But when you come to me, first of all, you sought me. And then you paid me for my services. So obviously, you admire me and what I do. Mm -hmm. So when I give you a path or give you a plan to implement, to advance in your career, you won't perceive it that way because you've already known me on a prof professional level. Your family know you. Right. They've come to you. Right. Why don't you use those tactics with your family so they mm -hmm. don't view you as being outspoken, blunt, non-caring, headstrong, and insensitive? Because the apple don't fall too far from the tree. So you're saying your family, you actually pulled these traits from your family, you feel? I feel that, yes. Some of my traits have come in being blunt, direct, um, a little bit unsensitive, have been from my upbringing, yes. My, my dad was very blunt. My mother has been very blunt. Yes, now time, that she's, time has gone by and she's grown and we've all grown now. You know, things are a little different for her, but... I'm still in my growing stage. I'm still learning. I'm still Where does the hothead come from? Where in all of this do I don't, you have I a label not, of being a hothead? <laughs> like I said, sometimes I don't 
I'm non-confrontational. I won't go back and forth in a debate of conversation with family. But you'll walk away? I will walk away. Uh, how does that look? Why hothead? Okay, so I'm mm -hmm. in a situation with my family. Things don't go well. I get down. I try to be passive. I let it go. Mm -hmm. This is my aunt. This is my whatever. Mm -hmm. But where does the hothead come in? I don't see this right. in your circle. Why, right. are that, why is that labeled? I believe the hothead is just labeled in my words. I'm very direct. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I, words do you use? I'm not be no form of profanity or I'm anything. Not, I, like think, that. I wouldn't have asked that if but, I thought it was. Uh -huh. But very direct. I'm going like give me. I feel that you give me a hot head. I feel that you don't value yourself. Oh, you made that judgment on somebody. Correct. Tell me the way you say it to the person. I want to hear. I want to hear Kimberly say it. I feel that you don't value yourself. And they say, "What make you think that?" And I lay out the examples from our, and I'm a queen of reinstatement. I'm mimicking everything that you've told me. I'm not adding or taking away. I bring to the table facts. And I have stated that many of times. I'm only bringing you facts. I'm not bringing you my personal opinion. I'm giving what you gave me. And I'm telling you how that is perceived from my point of view now mm -hmm. because you came to me. So a lot of times people can't or won't perceive it because that's my directness. I'm coming fully with facts instead of maybe stroking your ego or empathize with you well, a little I more. I want to find out. We're going to go to commercial. I want to find out your relationship with your eight brothers and sisters. Okay. And what you're going to do about what you heard. Okay. Please <laughs> come back because this is killing me. I got to know. Curious as to what Kimberly is going to do with the information that she heard. Come back. Loving NDME TV curiosity. Oh, it has been hot today. I have Miss Positive, Miss Kimberly with us, who I love dearly. However, it has been revealed that she's a hothead. Can I see it? Don't want to see it. The second thing I heard that she could be blunt. I don't know what she's going to think as she walks out the door talking about me. And then the third thing that I know is that she could be insensitive, which I find very hard to believe. But you've heard this. You heard this, Kimberly. And I just got to go there. Being a woman of God, being a person who knows that you are not perfect and knowing that no one else is perfect, what you going to do about what you heard when it comes time to your relationship with other people? Um, like I said, every day I continue to work on myself, you know, and I believe that God just placed us in the right timing for everything. So he will allow that as long as I stay prayerful, and I allow God to continue to develop me in the person that he wants me to be, he's going to put me in place to be able to fix those relationships for those who may feel those way, those, that way about me. I'm your sister. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, you have hurt me greatly by mm -hmm. the things that you have said to me. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of the things that I've said might have merited that, or maybe I don't see what you see, but you hurt me. And it, it's bothering me that you hurt me. You say, I'm sorry. Do you wonder why or how you have hurt them? Um, I do open that up, but I do feel like if someone has shown me that they don't, that they, I may have hurt them, I normally know why. So do you feel a need to change? Are we going to see a change from what we heard? I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm just seeing this beautiful person, sparkly eyes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful smile, a mother who is so loving, so kind that your children are so blessed to have you as their mother. Mm -hmm. But in your day-to-day -day striving to be the best that you could be, your world is smaller because you choose it to be, mm -hmm. because you feel people are shrinking or pulling on you, which could be truthful, not be truthful. But is there anything in that conversation about blunt, which usually means you could be cruel, cruel, I'm using the word cruel, right? not just need you to know. Cruel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a person who's insensitive, which means I could care less about you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a need to change any way at all with those qualities? So what I am willing to change is that I know that truth hurts. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not my timing to express my truth. 
especially when you are coming to me f- to just empathize with you. And I need to take on that spirit. So you're not going to take it on. You're not going to empathize with it. But if you're going to value the truth, do you feel that there's any truth to what is being said? About me? Mm-hmm. Do I, you see that about yourself? I do. I definitely do see that about myself of being blunt, um, being very direct. Um, I don't necessarily feel like it's in a cruel way. Um, like I mentioned, truth does hurt. Well, blunt but, doesn't mean it's not like you see in a cruel way. It is cruel. Mm-hmm. To be blunt means that there's no open door for anything else. It's cruel. No. Blunt can be that um, I think that your hair color is too bright. That's, That's an very, opinion. That is an opinion. And I could have stated that to you, though. But technically, you're To be blunt to me. means that you would say it in a way that would be cruel to me. To say your hair color is not the right color for you is an opinion. It's too red. Okay. Okay. So, Mm -hmm. that's an opinion. Mm -hmm. But to be blunt means that you said it in a way that is cruel. That's what I'm saying. So, just like I mentioned it to you, I never say anything in a cruel manner. It's Hmm. very direct to you. And even though it may be the truth, you're not ready to receive that truth. Okay? I didn't angrily say, oh my God, that red is ugly on you. That's cruel. Okay, but I can say that red may not look good or that red is not good on you, girl. That is not working for you. That is not cruel. That's very direct and blunt to you. Well, what I hear in your conversation when you say, girl, there's some love in there. But Mm -hmm. blunt means there is no love. Mm -mm, That's what I'm saying. Blunt, outspoken, and also insensitive. There is no love in those comments. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, saying that my hair is not working for you, girl, is love. Mm-hmm. Blunt is the way that you say it where I am hurt. So, that's where... So, if you say that hair is not working for you, I'm going to say, well, what color do you think is good? What's my that's not right? That's a dialogue. Mm-hmm. But now, you have shut me off because your comment is blunt that I don't even hear it, could care less what your opinion is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, do you find that to be truthful? No. Like I mentioned, I'm very direct, I'm very blunt, but it's not in a cruel way. Like Mm -hmm. I said, truth does hurt. You may not be willing to accept that truth at that time, and that's where I'm working on myself around. What about the insensitive, being insensitive, which means I don't care what you think. So the insensitive part comes in because I don't tolerate the continuance around it, because I won't allow a negative conversation to transpire. I won't allow us to debate. You may take that as me being insensitive to you, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. So the three things, outspoken, blunt, Okay, we know you're positive. Mm-hmm. It comes out your mouth all the time. Mm-hmm. It's all in your, your, your language. Mm-hmm. But the outspoken, the blunt, and the insensitive, what are you going to do about that? Are you going to say, I could care less, I'm going to think about it, or it's not necessary to be in no, my No, every day is a day for development. Every day is a day to advance yourself and be a better person. So that's why I strive to be every day. But I'm not here to please anyone. I'm only here to please God and myself. Mm-hmm. So, What about your husband? Oh, of course, my husband as well. Of course, my husband. But that's two different things. I made a vow to him in front of my fam- friends and family in front of God that this was the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with. So, yes, that's different. But in my marriage, especially eight years of us being married, and we've been together for 13 years, there's been a lot of this, okay? But a lot of this has gotten us to a place of growth and to be able to say that we've been married for eight years and be each other's best friend. How am I going to learn and grow with you if we don't clash, if you don't tell me about myself? Life is not peaches and cream. I'm not perfect and you're not. But if you can't be willing to work with me on that, vice versa, me work with you on that, then that's where I'm willing to let you go. And maybe that's where the cruelty comes in at. Mm, girlfriend is... Give me that look again. That's where the cruelty oh, comes in at. okay. Thank you for being with us. This is Curiosity. Make sure you tune in next week because we may have somebody like Kimberly here, positive and yet still I've spoken and speaking her mind <laughs> and her truth. See you next week. TV.com, the Everybody Network.